Well, hey, howdy, and welcome to the Camp Wood Dog Workshop. Um, <coughs> I'm no longer offering caswelling as a service here at the shop, but um, a lot of guys like it and use it, and some guys have never used it call me and say, hey, how do I do that? So anyway, I decided I'm going to do a video on this. Now, as, with any procedures in anything, there's always like 10 different ways to do stuff, and none of them are really right or wrong. This is the way I do it. You might do it a little differently, and that's okay too. But anyway, I'm going to show you how I do it. You're going to need a couple different items. You're going to need your two cans of Caswell, A and B part. I like to use some rust dissolver. You can use Rust-Oleum rust dissolver or Evapo rust. They're both equally efficient. A can of acetone, something to measure with. Caswell's font kit comes with like a little mixing cup. Let's see, I don't have, I always throw them out when I get them because they're, they're so big, they're hard to use. A um, pair of gloves would help. Something to mix your Caswell in, a stick to stir it. And when you got that, you're ready to go. Now what I do, Caswell stuff is really thick, and to try to pour it out of the can, you got to, you know, gooping all over the edge and all that. So as soon as I get a new set of Caswell, I drill a hole, hot glue, uh, an elbow in, and make a little pour spout. Now again, the Caswell solution is really thick, heavily viscous, and hard to pour. So one trick to make it easier is you get yourself a pan of really hot water and set your cans in it for about 10 minutes and that heats up your caswell and makes it uh, flow faster. Now in prepping the font caswell says that rust inside the font is actually beneficial because your stuff can cling to it. I'm, I'm not sold on that. I have Caswell completely rusted out fonts and then cut them apart to see just what happened and the Caswell does form You know a nice heavy coating inside But the whole coating can come off the wall because the rust uh, Just peels off so what I like to do before I even start the Caswell is put in with apple rust rust dissolver or if you're not worried about aggressive chemicals, muriatic acid. And that eats up all the rust. If it's a brass font, that'll also get the tarnish out of the inside of the font. Pour out your rust dissolver, flush it with water, get as much of the water out as you can. You know, one way to do it is just take paper towels and roll them up into tampons like this. Just stick the end down in the font and it wicks up the water. After you do that, get some acetone. Pour it in and swish it around and once again pull out the excess. The Caswell epoxy and acetone are friendly. They can work together, but Caswell can't work with water. That's why you got to get the water out. So anyway, after you get your font cleaned and prepped, what you want to do is mix your Caswell. And what's critical is that it's a one part to two part ratio. And if you don't get that right, it's not going to set right. As I said, they give you that little mixing cup, but that's so big you lose a lot of Caswell that sticks to the side of the cup. And it's got a big spout on it, it's hard to manage. So what I do, I go to my local tractor supplier, any animal or veterinary supply place sells these big syringes like this. They even come bigger. And what I'll do, put on my rubber gloves because the Caswell will not irritate your skin, but the stickiness of it is going to irritate you because you're not going to be able to get it off. So I'll take my rubber glove which is on, put my thumb over the bottom, and then pour Caswell in to the desired amount. The bigger your syringe is, the more you can mix at one time. 
So if I fill up my two part to 30, what I'll do is I'll take it and shoot it into my mixing container. <coughs> then I'll fill up the other one part with 15, shoot it in the mixing container and stir this up. And you really got to stir it a lot. You know, if you spend a minute and a half or two minutes stirring, that's about what it takes because you want these two to be thoroughly, thoroughly mixed. Then what I'll do is I'll put my glove back on and pour that back into the syringe, put the plunger in, turn upside down, and then sh shoot it in through the filler cap. Now, I'm going to take a little aside here and talk about some stuff. There's a couple problems that can occur when you're caswelling your font. There's things inside the font that can get blocked with caswell and make your life miserable. On most of the contemporary lanterns, the pump snorkel comes up and just about touches the inside of the font. If when you roll it, you get Caswell in there and it sets, you're cooked. I mean, it's such a bear to get it out, I don't want to talk about it. So, after you put your Caswell in, roll it, just keep pumping this sucker to blow out any Caswell that might be stuck in there. Okay? That's on contemporary fonts. The earlier pump fonts, before Coleman figured this out, instead of running their pump tube at an angle, they ran it straight in. So the issue was, when they put the valve in, they had to put a little snorkel tube that went off to the side to clear the pump tube. So when you take your valve out, you pull that little snorkel tube out, and then you're good to go. On CQs, ARCs, 319s, Anything that's a torch light that has a fuel pickup rod like this, the pickup, the fuel pickup holes are right at the bottom. You know, this, this nut is on the outside, so these holes are riding just a tiny bit above the bottom of the font. So, you put your caswell in, roll it around, let it sit like that. The caswell is going to puddle around your pickup holes set, and you're screwed. Um... So what I do is after I put the caswell in and roll the font a number of times, if you have a little air compressor or aquarium pump, anything that will move air, hook it up and just, you know, keep blowing air down here to keep the caswell from flowing into the pickup holes. If you don't have anything like that, you got to do it old school and blow into it and do it a couple of times. Once you do that and you know your holes are clear, you can just upend the font so that any excess caswell flows down around where this is the top of the font. But, as I said, continue to check to make sure you're not clogging up your holes here. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Oh, yeah. After you mix this up, pour it into your syringe, shoot it in, there's still going to be a lot of caswell in here because the stuff is so thick. It's going to cling to the wall. So just take your little paddle, scrape as much of it off as you can in one spot, pour a little more into your syringe and shoot it in. Um, that way you're using up as much as you can. Typically on a font like this, I'm, I'm using about... 60 milliliters of material. So that's going to take a, you know, a couple times filling your thing to get your 60 milliliters. Once you got it in, what you want to do is roll the font slowly to get the Caswell to cover everything. What Caswell would like you to do is use half of the kit mix it up, pour it in, then dump out the excess. Problem with that is then you can only get two lanterns done with the lantern kit. Um, let's see, I don't have a lantern kit. Anyway, 
you don't have to use that much because you're going to have a lot that you waste. So mix it and and you know use a, a you know a sensible amount to put it in. But anyway, you got to keep rolling your font to get it to cover. And typically, I'll I'll roll a font like this three or four times. I do it while I'm watching television. And you roll it slowly, and it takes about 20 minutes to get three or four rolls if you roll it slowly. So, let me see if there's anything else I need to tell you about that. Um, so be careful about clogging, your, or clogging up your air pickups or your fuel pickups. Your valve, take the valve out, because the pickup tube on that is going to be right close to the bottom of the font and that would clog up too so you want to get your valve out of there. After you put your Caswell in you want to make sure that any threaded hookups are free of Caswell. It's either going to be a valve bung threaded or on CQ's the inside of the filler cap is threaded. If you let Caswell set in that once again, you're making yourself a lot of extra work. It's a bear to get it out. Um, so what I do, again, I'll take a paper towel, roll it up a little, dip it in acetone, and then clean out the inside of the, that threaded bunghole. Um, that's it. It's not that hard. It's just, you know, surface prep. Make sure your font is good and clean. Make sure that the interior of the font has no water in it. A little bit of acetone is okay. All that does is dilute the Caswell just a little bit. You mix your Caswell according to instructions exactly one part to two part. Stir the snot out of it so you know it's really mixed up well. Shoot it in and then clear out your stuff. <coughs> You'll know the Caswell in your font has set when the little tiny bit of Caswell left in your mixing bowl has set. So that's it. I hope that's helpful. Um, now you know as much about it as I do. And as I said, you know, other guys, will have the way they do it might vary a little bit. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong, but this is what works for me. All right. Thanks for stopping by Camp Wound Dog Workshop. Y'all have a good weekend. Bye.